It started out as a normal Father's Day trip. I couldn't have been more wrong. The sun rose lazily over the horizon, its golden rays filtering through the dense canopy of the forest. Birds chirped their morning greetings, and a gentle breeze rustled the leaves overhead. We had chosen this spot for its seclusion, a place where cell phones had no service, and the only soundtrack was the symphony of nature. A perfect escape for a family wanting to reconnect and celebrate Father's Day. I glanced at my wife, Emma, as she unpacked the picnic basket with practiced ease. She moved with a grace that always captivated me, her smile warm and reassuring. Our two children, Lily and Max, chased each other around the campsite, their laughter echoing through the trees. The air was crisp, carrying the scent of pine and earth, a reminder of why we love these trips so much. The morning passed in a blissful haze. We hiked along the narrow trails, the path winding through the forest like a forgotten whisper. The woods were a sanctuary, each step drawing us further from the demands of daily life. Lily and Max darted ahead, their youthful exuberance infectious. Emma and I followed, hand in hand, savoring the simplicity of the moment. As we ventured deeper, the forest seemed to embrace us, the towering trees forming a protective barrier against the outside world. There was an ancient quality to this place, a feeling that time had stood still. I paused to catch my breath, watching the way the sunlight danced on the forest floor. It was serene, almost too perfect. We found a clearing by a small, babbling brook and decided it was the perfect spot for lunch. Emma spread out a blanket, and we sat down to enjoy the meal she had so lovingly prepared. The sandwiches tasted better than they ever did at home, the fresh air adding a flavor all its own. Max munched on his apple, his eyes wide with wonder as he watched a dragonfly hover nearby. Lily braided blades of grass into a makeshift crown, her face lit up with pure joy. I took a moment to absorb the scene, committing it to memory. This was what Father's Day was meant to be, a celebration of family, love, and the simple pleasures of life. Yet beneath the surface, a subtle unease began to creep in, like a shadow lurking just out of sight. The forest, though beautiful, held an air of mystery that I couldn't quite shake. As the afternoon wore on, the light began to shift, casting long shadows that stretched like fingers across the ground. The laughter of my children seemed to take on an eerie quality, the sound echoing in a way that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Emma, sensing my discomfort, gave me a reassuring smile, her eyes reflecting the same unease. We decided to set up camp for the night, choosing a spot near the brook. The kids helped pitch the tent, their enthusiasm a welcome distraction from the growing tension. We built a fire, the flames crackling and dancing as dusk settled in. The forest, once vibrant and full of life, now felt heavy with silence, the usual nocturnal sounds conspicuously absent. As night fell, the darkness seemed to press in on us, the firelight casting flickering shadows on the tent walls. The kids were tucked in, their breathing slow and even, a comforting rhythm in the stillness. Emma and I sat by the dying embers, the quiet between us filled with unspoken thoughts. The forest, now shrouded in black, seemed to watch us, an unseen presence lurking in the void. I tried to shake off the feeling, convincing myself it was just the unfamiliar surroundings playing tricks on my mind. But deep down, I knew something was off. There was an almost imperceptible shift in the air, a sense that we were not alone. I glanced at Emma, her face illuminated by the faint glow of the fire. She looked at me, her eyes mirroring my unease. The night stretched on the silence oppressive. As I finally lay down to sleep, I couldn't help but feel a sense of foreboding. The forest, once a place of refuge, now seemed like a watchful entity, waiting. The next morning, we woke to the sound of birds singing and the brook babbling nearby. The sun pierced through the trees, casting a warm glow over our campsite. It felt like another beautiful day but a nagging feeling of unease clung to me. Emma noticed it too. She was quieter than usual, her smiles more subdued. 
we decided to spend the day exploring the deeper parts of the forest, places we hadn't ventured before. Max and Lily ran ahead, their laughter echoing through the trees. Emma and I walked close together, the tranquility of the woods doing little to ease the growing tension. As we moved deeper into the forest, the light dimmed, filtered through the dense foliage. The air grew cooler, the silence more pronounced. I kept glancing around, expecting to see something, anything, that would explain the dread building inside me. Emma squeezed my hand, her grip tighter than usual. It was around midday when we heard it, a rustling sound, faint at first, but growing louder, like something large moving through the underbrush. We stopped, scanning the trees. Nothing. Just the rustling. Then silence. Probably a deer, I said, trying to sound confident. Emma nodded, but I could see the doubt in her eyes. We continued on, but the feeling of being watched intensified. Every snap of a twig, every rustle of leaves had us on edge. I kept Max and Lily closer, their carefree laughter now replaced with cautious whispers. By late afternoon, we decided to head back to camp. The forest seemed darker, the path more twisted than before. The rustling sound followed us, sometimes closer, sometimes further away. But always there. We quickened our pace, unease turning into fear. As we neared the campsite, the sound grew louder, more frantic. Suddenly, it stopped. The silence was deafening. We stood still, listening, waiting. Then, without warning, a figure burst from the underbrush. It was fast, a blur of shadows and claws. Before I could react, it had Emma. She screamed, her voice piercing the silence as the creature dragged her towards the trees. I lunged forward, grabbing her arm, trying to pull her back. Her eyes met mine, wide with terror, and for a moment, they flickered, changing color. A deep, unnatural hue. Emma! I yelled, my grip slipping as the creature's claws raked across my arm, leaving a searing pain in their wake. Blood ran down my arm, but I held on, refusing to let go. Her screams echoed through the forest, a haunting sound that would stay with me forever. With one final, desperate pull, the creature yanked her from my grasp. I stumbled back, falling to the ground, my arm burning with pain. Emma disappeared into the darkness, her screams fading into the night. I lay there, gasping for breath, the world around me spinning. The forest was silent again, an oppressive, watchful silence. I struggled to my feet, clutching my wounded arm. Max and Lily were crying, huddled together, their eyes wide with fear. We have to go, I said, my voice shaking. We have to find help, but deep down, I knew there was no help. Not out here, in the middle of nowhere. The forest had taken Emma, and it felt like it was only a matter of time before it came for the rest of us. We ran. The forest, once our sanctuary, had transformed into a labyrinth of shadows and threats. My arm throbbed with pain, each step sending shockwaves through my body, but I couldn't stop. Not with Max and Lily clinging to my sides, their terrified faces driving me forward. The creature's guttural growls echoed behind us, a constant reminder of the danger lurking in the darkness. I pushed my children ahead, urging them to move faster. The trees closed in around us, their branches like skeletal fingers reaching out to pull us back. My heart pounded in my chest, every beat a desperate plea for survival. The path twisted and turned, leading us deeper into the unknown. The forest floor was uneven, littered with roots and rocks that threatened to trip us with every step. Suddenly, Max stumbled, his small body hitting the ground with a thud. I scooped him up, my grip firm despite the agony in my arm. Lily was ahead, her eyes wide with fear, but she kept running, her little legs pumping with determination. The creature's snarls grew louder, closer. I could feel its hot breath on the back of my neck, its claws raking the air just inches from my skin. Panic surged through me, but I couldn't let it take hold. I had to protect my children. We burst into a clearing, the moonlight casting an eerie glow over the landscape. There was nowhere left to run. 
The creature emerged from the trees, a mass of shadows and fury, its eyes glowing with an otherworldly light. It lunged forward, and I braced myself for the inevitable. Then, everything went black. I awoke with a start, my heart hammering in my chest. The familiar surroundings of our bedroom came into focus, the early morning light filtering through the curtains. I was drenched in sweat, my breath coming in ragged gasps. Happy Father's Day! Max and Lily shouted, their voices pulling me back to reality. They jumped onto the bed, their faces alight with joy and excitement. Emma stood by the doorway, smiling warmly. For a moment, I felt a wave of relief. It had all been a nightmare, a horrific vision brought on by the dark corners of my mind. But as I looked at her, a flicker of unease passed through me. Her eyes, they flickered, just like in the dream. A deep, unnatural hue that sent a chill down my spine. Dad, are you okay? Max's voice was full of concern. I forced a smile, ruffling his hair. Yeah, buddy. Just a bad dream. But as I glanced down at my arm, my blood ran cold. There, beneath the covers, was a thin line of dried blood tracing the path of the wound from my nightmare. I looked back at Emma, my heart sinking. Her eyes locked onto mine, the brief flicker of unnatural color gone, replaced by her usual warmth. But I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Come on, let's get breakfast, Emma said, her voice cheerful. We've got a long day ahead of us. I nodded, the dread settling in the pit of my stomach. As we moved towards the kitchen, I couldn't help but glance back at the bed. The faint traces of blood, a stark reminder that some nightmares are more than just dreams.